Hello and welcome to the APW. Today it's part chimping session and we're going to have a chat with Ian and we're going to follow his signal chain from his guitar through his rather lovely selection of pedals into the amp to see how he's going to bring the noise today. So Ian. Hello. Hello. What do you have for us? <laughs> I'll do the guitar relatively quickly. I've had this for a very long time. This is an old Guild S300D. All right. So. Um, I've no idea. I, I think the fact that it didn't look like a lot of other guitars was the, the reason that I got it back in the day. Um, and for us, we keep it nice and simple. We only ever use the, the front pickup. All right. Never gets used for, for anything else. So it's uh, everything's really simple. I never mess with the controls. We just go with it as it is. Yeah. So, that's old. I think it's from sometime in the 70s, like 75 or 76, but somebody will correct me if I get it wrong. <laughs> um, but yep, absolutely love it. Sounds great. It's been on the last couple of albums. Before that, I used to have a, an old Fender Telecaster yeah. Deluxe, but it got stolen. Oh no! Yeah, so uh, sounded great, but such is life. Yeah. I'll walk you through the, the pedals. Let's, yeah, let's have a look, because um, we've got, we, me and Chris were having a little look earlier, and we're like, we don't know what that is, that's a chimp blender, that can only be cool. Uh, so what have we got to start off with, uh, you've got a couple of compressors on the board here. Um, no, just the one compressor, so that, that tiny little SP compressor, they're really, really nice, just tiny pedal, really easy to fit on a board, and it sounds great, and has loads of boost on it as well, so as well as, I, I keep it off most of the time, but when you click it on, you just get a little bit of lift and, and that can be really really helpful especially for us when uh, there's so much kind of just distortion going on or fuzz that, uh, that so you poke through the mix slightly sometimes the, yeah. the other one that might look like a compressor is uh um, it's a big muff it's a it's a oh. uk makes those um, right i was tricked by the sustain knob you see yeah quite weirdly it's a big muff that has a treble and bass control rather than just the normal um it's just a, like a tone cut that's on most big muffs. Right. Um, so Terry's also got a big muff, but that sounds a little bit different and it's nice. The Pog is just an octave pedal, but it's one that we don't really play single string things, so it needs to deal with the whole uh, guitar being played all at once. These two are the main noises in in the stuff that I do. The Fuzz War has replaced... I've had Fuzz Factories and a thing called the Big Sonic Expandora. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was using could go on. <laughs> some stuff from Earthquaker and it really really good but the Fuzz War it just sounds great to me it's too flexible so it makes too many different no noises so I've got little dots on there to oh, make yeah. sure that it's always making the noise that I want it to make and I think you know if anybody gets Fuzz Wars they can sound really really different but I love this particular one um, the Chimp Blender is a, a clone of a broken Fender Blender um, okay. I had it years ago and it, I use it on everything and none of the modern, more modern Fender Blenders worked very well so I got it cloned. A guy actually objected to cloning it because it sounded terrible when he put it through his little test rig in, the, um, in his studio when he was building it but if you put it through a 2x15 and a big amp you're, you're, it sounds really That's what it's fantastic. for. It's a fantastic, really really fuzzy. Um, there's a tone thing that sort of adds in an octave but it's not a normal octave to it, it's great. Like an octaver sort of uh, when they're doing something with the capacitor to squeeze through the higher frequencies that instead of the lower frequencies. Sounds about right, yeah. yeah. It, the original Fender Blender is the sort of Neil Young sound, so oh, right. it, you know, the single note solos and the, um, those things, you get a really nice, it's really, really fuzzed out. Mm. Not everybody likes it because it's very unsubtle. Um, the rest, that's just a trem pedal, um, a Franton pedal, but they're really good and it manages to fully cut off the signal and back on. Nice. Um, there's an analog delay um, at that point, and above it, the dime head thing, that's a, a clone uh, of a crazy pedal called a Schumann PLL. It's, it's essentially like an analog tracker and synthesizer um, in cool. a pedal, and it makes um, noises like no other pedals do. I think Earthquaker have tried to do it recently with a pedal they've just put out. It's very similar to that, mm. but this is a German copy of, of the original. Right. Um, and that's basically it. The tuner is the tuner. And, you know, you you, you, you've sleep. got to have a tuner, otherwise you can't come in. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we try. We, we don't need it a lot. Um, <laughs> and above... So I moved to using these um, before the last record. No. And they weigh absolutely nothing. They're tiny um, things. They, they weigh about the same as two effects pedals put together. 
uh, and yet they're 200 watts and um, they go as loud as any of the, the kind of huge high watts and Selmers I've been using before mm. and they sound really really good we we reamped everything on the um, on our recent record through the quilters and they sounded fantastic the sound on the last record or my sound on the last record is is that and it, it sounds great to me Amazing. so i'm i really love them so much so that i'm i've slightly influenced bob um who you're going to see in a second yes. also has a, a quarter but it really saves a lot of lugging it, it's yeah. too crazy it's amazing because they sound great in the control room so the tone in there at the moment is they, absolutely brilliant they do the job i'm i was really impressed by them at first really skeptical because i thought it was going to break i thought we were going to tour and it was going to give us problems but over time it's held its own up it, it, they deal really well with all the pedals in front of them um, they go really loud and they stay really loud mm. and I use two of them because um, I always use a kind of a bassier sound and a cutting through sound sort yeah. of mixed together it gives me the sound and sounds great to me so in part chimp bass world now with Bob Yes. And uh, you've been influenced slightly by Ian. So we'll go backwards well, this time. <laughs> well, he's taken his own on many, on many occasions. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do this, we'll go backwards on this one because normally we go guitar in. But let's yeah, go yeah. with the bass, because you've got the sure. quilter bass block. That's right, yeah. Which is an 800 watts. We're basically just fishing for quilter to give us stuff soon. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely um, um, just Ian's. Quilters sounded great. Mm. I got this massive, heavy thing that is just a beast that I normally been dragging around, and I thought I'd get this one, and it sounds great, and it's louder than what I used to have, and it's I don't know. Well, wow. it's great. It sounds amazing. That's an amazing thing. We're going through Chris's yeah. usual two by ten, and uh, which also sounds really good for a small thing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it, it does us proud that little yeah. two by ten. Does. I mean, I'm always like. Bigger is better, but I'm going to have yeah. to go and do some soul searching. Now, when you're in a room like this, I mean, it, 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 it vibrates the floor just enough for you to know that there's a yeah, yeah, yeah. You can there. feel it in your ankles. Yeah, that's good. But then down here, yeah, um, we've got some very nice uh, things on the pedal board as well. Uh, tune up, good. Tune up. Um, so pitchfork. pitchfork. Yeah. So what are you using this for? Uh, basically, just octave down every now and then. Just for even more. For even more. Yeah. Lower. More is always more. So they say. Yeah. Yeah. So this one. And then here. we got the Ren and Cuff after that, which is a, a really fuzzy bass pedal. And what's good about it is you can dial in the, the clean and the wet sound. Oh, so it's a little bit So you have a little bit of right. more control over. So you. Because a lot of fuzzy bass pedals kind of loses the bottom end a bit. Yeah. So this one keeps it quite nice. And yeah. it's quite crazy, but it goes in a few parts. It's nice to have that in a pedal because a lot of basses come in they have a separate sans amber which takes their clean tone to the front of the house but if you can dial it in like do they that. yeah yeah oh, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I prefer that let's do that are you driving uh like you that's my staging? main distortion sound is so you, you whack, whack it whack it hard but this one basically uh, i don't use the boost on this because the boost is a bit i don't know you don't really get much out of that i really love the the basic distortion sound out of the full tone mm. but the boost is yeah not there so I use that as a boost the Ren and Cuff and it really you know you can hear the difference when it kicks in right and then a compressor for luck on the end compressor yeah, yeah yeah it's always good just to smooth things out before yeah. you uh, get in there before you tear the audience's minds out yes well Which... I hope to do anyway <laughs> one way or the other okay well, then we'll, we'll carry on straight going Great. over here shall we Oh, oh a guitar! Oh, yes, we well, forgot about yeah. the guitar bit. Well, it's got to have a guitar. Yeah, so they say. I so say it's um, Fender P, okay. and um, American-made uh, '90s version, yeah. and with a badass bridge. Get that in there, and some oh, yeah. some um, Line Nine pickups that I've changed to make it all a little bit hotter and a bit more louder because it's not. Nothing is ever loud enough. So, um, still with the part chimp session, I'm still remembering people's names, I promise. Tim. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> so, tell us about this. It's, it's, it's lovely, and I, lo I love the greeny blue. Yeah, um, that, that was the bit I did, um, apart from mash it all together. Uh, a friend of mine gave me this guitar in a bag, um, literally, with little bits hanging off it, and 
I put it together and and I put this pickup in because all the pickups yeah. were like really knackered. So and yeah, I threw this in and it seemed to work all right. And it yeah. had a, and it had a, its uh, original Bigsby. Oh, it actually had a Bigsby. It did. Yeah. Oh, nice. This particular model, I think, did it? Yeah, because yeah. the the other ones had a built-in trim. Right. But this one had a fixed Bigsby. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah that's about it. And then I I, I dyed it blue. Why? <laughs> Hey, it looks like some blue dye. Yeah, talking about, and it was uh, pretty horrible, just wood. Right, no, it looks it looks like an like an, like an aged nitro finish yeah. that might have been on it from the beginning. Yeah, that's that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that goes down here. We've got yeah. some uh, fuzzes and phasers. Uh, Big muff pie, which. Yeah, this is one of uh, Ian's oh, huge collection of, of distortion pedals, which he's kindly lent me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, just uh, this I just put in today because I've been a bit worried about your big muff. It's not, it's not giving, giving as much as it used to. Oh, I don't I'm, know what's I'm going so on. Sorry. I think it's, <laughs> it was kind of fine with the, with the original <laughs> battery from about 1970. What about know. the other one I lent you? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's. Oh yeah, the other one. You didn't lend me that one. That's it's still one. in the studio. It's still in the studio, but that was for you. Isn't it? So, it's domestic. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Yeah. So um, yeah. Little compressor, I don't know, give it a bit more sustain, I think. Mm. And um, super chimp, super chimp, big chimp, yeah. This is um, weird chimp, weird chimp. chimp. yeah, dirty chimp. <laughs> <laughs> what does that Filthy one do? Chimp. It's a like a modular delay, all oh, right. Um, Vestax, Vestax, who oh, are right, more yeah. well known for making like DJ, yeah, yeah, they are, yeah, yeah, they are. And but this is just completely berserk. I don't know really how to make it work, but I just and you'll do things with it. Going into the phaser, into the small chimp, yeah, from, a small chimp from, from the the, 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 the yeah. chimp. I don't usually use them both at the same time, which is they're just for weird noises, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's probably the weirdest way around to plug it in. So you're you're is it on, onto a good one if you're is it? plugging do you think in that so? way around. Yeah, yeah. I, I never know which way to put it in. I've been moving this around, but I think first is always good. Yeah. Those ones, yeah, maybe I should have one in the front end, I don't know. Oh, what's that, the phaser? The, 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 yeah, the delay or the phasers, I don't know. Maybe try it. Okay. I've, I've, never, I've never monkeyed with it, but... Um, I think we're both weird for putting a compressor at the front. Really? Oh, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd put a compressor at the front. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people put it at the end for... I don't even know. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Bass at the end, different. guitar at the front. Yeah. I, I always thought for compressors. Nice, good rule, we should write that down. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, and that, that's it for pedals. Then. That's it for pedals. Then we're going into an amp, and now, yeah. um, is there something about this amp? Oh, this... Well, it's funny you should mention that. Yeah, this is um, this is an H and H IC hundred S. Yep, two twelve combo. Well, it was a two twelve combo until my friend blew it up. Right, and I uh, thought I would do something weird, which I've got these old um, Electro Voice speakers from another cab. All right, I thought I'd throw in. 115. It was quite tricky. Right, so there's 115 in this now. There's 115, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, and I usually run it into another 412, but um, we've got a 212 today, which is yes. really lovely. This is 212. So, what's, what's, what's that kind of done for you having the 15 inch speaker? No idea. Yeah? No idea, because I haven't had really much chance to test it. I did it, and then we took it to Belgium the other day, didn't have a sound check, so just went straight into the gig, hmm. plugged it in, it worked. Which was that's the important which was thing, a result. It? Yeah, but I have no idea really what it sounds like until today. Right. Well, so, we'll have a yeah. good old listen in there, but later on. Yeah. yeah. So the part chip session. Now we're in the drum room, and uh, it's always the noisiest room actually. Not usually the noisiest room. Actually, I think today might win the noisiest room award. Possible. Yeah. Uh, in there. <laughs> but um, so, what have you got? for uh, the thumpy end? Well, um, the main part of it is a rather battered looking Yamaha 9000 that uh, I'm not sure if the original owner just beat out time on top of the uh, name badge there, but that's certainly <laughs> the way it looks. There's scratches all over the place as well. Yeah. Down here as well. It's almost got holes in it, but uh, really, really nice sounding kits. Mm. The so. kick drum weighs about three tons. Um, right, okay, so that'll, that'll do. Told me once that this particular one has bits of steel embedded in the wood. Not sure if it's true or not, but it's oh. certainly heavy. Feels like it. Yeah, I mean, you could believe. I mean, kick drums can be. They're full of air, aren't they? They're normally yeah, exactly. kind of yeah, fairly fair. forgiving. Yeah, my previous kit was light as air compared to this one. Right. But yeah, it sounds really good. I used to dream of owning one of those back when I was a 
teenager, I think, slightly. Mm. That was quite, quite the big kit back then. But anyway, uh, the snare drum is a Ludwig um, from, I guess, 70s, early 80s, mm. at a guess. And um, Symbols Pasty 2002 yes. series, both uh, 22 um, Crash and yeah. 22 Heavy Ride. Yes. Um, I mean, stick to Promark, but I mean, mm. they just what was in the shop at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, five A, five A, five A. That's what yeah. I use. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Um, if you have them heavier, then uh, it feels like you got thunderbolts in each hand. Mm. But then if they're just a bit slower, if you have really light ones. Can play, I can play much faster, but you know, you just can't hit the damn things quite as hard. Yeah, so, yeah. so five A's, the, 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 the part, the part chimp compromise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah well, really. cool. Well, we're about, about ready to start recording, so that's marvelous. Cheers, thanks so much.